The title of highest spec smartphone in the world just keeps on changing hands. The latest contender is this, the Motorola Droid X, announced a few weeks ago and already on sale in the USA. With a 1 GHz processor, 4.3 inch screen, Android 2.1, HDMI out, full flash, an 8 megapixel camera with 720p video capture, 8 gigabytes of onboard memory, plus a 16 gigabyte micro SD in the box, 512 megabytes of RAM, multi touch throughout, and swipe preloaded plus all the usual 2010 specs and three, count them, three microphones for various capture and cancellation duties. I was also impressed by the 1570 milliamp hour battery with an official option for one for 1930 milliamp hours with only a one millimeter addition to the Droid X's thickness. An update to Froyo, Android 2.2 is in progress too. It's USA only at the moment, but still, did you ever think Motorola could come back with such a vengeance? Kudos. And, as mentioned in last week's phone show chat, what do you mean you don't listen to this? <laughs> Motorola, again, has announced the charm. Again, USA only at the moment, but sure to come over here. This is a full QWERTY candy bar running Android 2.1 with the Moto Blur social overlay chucked on top. There's a 2.8-inch touchscreen, perfect for this form factor, plus a 3-megapixel camera, and, curiously, a trackpad on the rear, as on the Motorola backflip. It'll never catch on, you know. The battery's weak, though, at 1170 milliamp hours, plus there are the usual Wi-Fi, GPS, and so on. We've been seeing quarter two 2010 sales figures reported by the world's phone manufacturers, headed by Nokia, at 111 million phones sold at a market share of 33%. In terms of smartphones, 59 million were sold worldwide in quarter two, headed again by Nokia with 24 million Symbian-powered units, a world market share of 41%. Uh, RIMS Blackberries are in second place in smartphone sales with 10 million, while Apple sold around 8 million iPhones in quarter two, down quarter on quarter, but then the iPhone 4 will kickstart things for quarter three, of course. Adding up the sales of Android smartphones in quarter two should also get them to the 8 million mark, though some stats aren't fully known yet. You'll remember that I changed the name of this video podcast a couple of years ago from The Smartphone Show to The Phone Show, reflecting the fact that I wanted to cover some non-smartphones too. In fact, devices just like this Nokia C3. My hope with this was that it would provide 80% or more of the functionality of its smartphone brother, the E63, but at about half the price. And by this metric, at least, it justifies its existence. The build quality is pretty good, the keyboard is excellent, and the, uh, the battery and speaker and phone and music functions all impress. However, that last 20% is a real wrench for someone like me, used to uh, proper smartphones. Not having multitasking, for example, so having to close down the web browser in order to do, well, just about anything, or having to close down the, the Communities app in order to check my calendar. It's just a huge pain. It's wait, 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 wait. Multitasking should mean never having to do any of this. Now, Nokia's Series 40 interface used here on the C3 has been evolving over the last five years or so, but the settings menu is still messier than on old S60 devices and more scatterbrained than that in the BlackBerry. There's a basic social interface in the aforementioned communities offering Twitter and Facebook friend status updates, but it's oh so slow, five second waits aren't uncommon, oh so limited, uh, for example not being able to see mentions of yourself on Twitter. Having said that the hardware is pretty good, there's one huge flaw, Nokia has penny pinched horribly on the screen skimping on putting in a transflective layer with the predictable result that you can't read the C3 screen when you go outdoors on a sunny day. It's quite appalling. The modern Series 40 interface also annoyed me by constantly going online, often without rhyme nor reason. What does this think it is? A smartphone? <laughs> Even worse, despite the C3 having, impressively, Wi-Fi in its specs, Vodafone in the UK, for which this is an exclusive at the moment, have crippled it either by design or by incompetence, so that Wi-Fi is almost always bypassed in favour of the GPRS connection. And yes, I said GPRS, there's no 3G here either, which seems rather a huge omission in 2010, especially when the Wi-Fi is broken. I get where Nokia were going with the C3. I really wanted to like it and recommend it at this price. Uh, but for budget-limited buyers, my phone show verdict ends up being to avoid it like the plague and spend a little more and get the uh, E63 instead. Hi there, phone show viewers. I'm here with the new Dell Streak. It's a 5-inch tablet-style phone running Android. 
It's available direct from Dell, unlocked, for £450. It's also available on contract from O2 in the UK. Hardware-wise, we've got this beautiful thin device, fantastic screen, uh, great soft-touch metal back, um, standard goodies, 3G, Wi-Fi, GPS. Uh, we've also got a double-action camera button on the top, which allows you to focus and also to take your pictures using this 5 megapixel double LED flash camera, which does a pretty good job. We've also got a front-facing VGA camera. Um, one particular surprise was the 1500 milliamp hour battery in the back is actually good for about two days of moderate use, which uh, is something of a rarity nowadays with modern smartphones. Negatives, whilst they'll seem fit to include a pretty decent set of headphones in the box, sadly the actual audio from the device is quite poor even with a very expensive set of headphones. The audio on the phone, just with general speaking, uh, very thin. The microphone's quite good, but you can't really hear the other side very clearly. And uh, despite this huge speaker grill on the back, the speakerphone is pretty terrible. Looking at the software, we have a custom version of Android 1.6. Dell has promised an upgrade to 2.2 before the end of the year. Performance is generally good. The 1 GHz Snapdragon processor really makes itself felt, although I did experience the odd freeze and occasional stutter, which is probably due to the software, which does still feel rather unfinished. Although the resolution is similar to other smaller Android phones, that extra screen size really does help make you feel more productive. The streak also packs this awesome scratch-resistant Gorilla Glass screen, which is tremendously hard to scratch with your keys in your pocket. Onto the negatives, the keyboard has this very unusual numeric keypad to the right-hand side, which makes typing pretty uncomfortable in landscape mode, forcing you to stretch with your right hand to reach the keys. Things are better in portrait mode, but the streak is very much landscape orientated. I also noticed this strange issue with the volume key reversing, depending on screen orientation, which did cause me a bit of confusion. Overall then, this is a beautifully constructed bit of kit, which reminds me of an old communicator or Scion. Though I do think Dell would have been more successful with a 4-inch screen version, I do have a still think that when the upgrade to 2.2 does come along, this device still has much to recommend it. It's fantastically well built, it's got great battery life, and I think for the business or power user, it really could be an ideal phone. So I've tried a few phones over the last 18 months. My favourite is the Nokia N79, uh, Candy Bar, which is my favourite form factor. Um, it's really robust, great camera, 5 megapixel Carl Zeiss with a dual LED flash. Uh, it's got all the usual connectivity options. Um, I use Opera, Sports Tracker, Gravity, Podcasting, uh, Mail for Exchange, all those Nokia Symbian apps on that. I bought the 5230 to try out Nokia's SatNav through Obby Maps, um, which works really well. The touchscreen's alright, it got better with the version 20 firmware. Um, the camera's really pretty poor, um, there's no flash, um, there's no Wi-Fi, it's not a deal breaker for me. I do think you need SPB Mobile Shell to get a good home screen out of it though. Um, next one I tried was the T-Mobile Pulse Mini, I wanted to try Android. Um, it's not a great idea for trying out Android because it's a QVGA screen, you'll miss out on a lot of the apps on the marketplace. Um, although it's nice that it comes with version 2.1. Um, there's 15 home screens which is a bit over the top and the touch screen is really poor, even with the stylus it's very inaccurate. Then I got the IT910 HD off Mr. Salmon. Um, it's a bit too big and heavy for me. The battery didn't last long enough, um, and I miss a lot of the Nokia apps um, you run in Symbian. Um, but I'm sure it's a great phone for a lot of other people. Um, the screen's absolutely fantastic. I also use a BlackBerry 8520, which is supplied by my work, and it's a great business tool. Couldn't run my uh, day without it, but I wouldn't recommend it to anyone as a personal phone. And phones I'm looking out for next would be uh, the X10 Mini Pro, just because it's so small, and the HTC Vision if it exists.